The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. When John the Baptist showed up, way back in the beginning of this story, he preached fire. People flocked to the desert to hear that message. It was exactly what they wanted to hear. They could not wait for the Messiah to show up. They couldn't wait for the Messiah to restore their nation and punish their enemies. They weren't terribly bloodthirsty people, they were just tired. They were worn out from generations of oppression and poverty. They were exhausted by the struggle to just live their lives as faithful people in an occupied country, dreaming of fiery retribution was practically the only spark of hope they had left. And then Jesus showed up. And he was not quite as fiery as all that. Instead of smiting sinners, he ate dinner with them. Instead of casting out the people who opposed him, he taught them. Instead of recruiting the powerful so he could claim his kingdom by force, he spent his time with the people who had the least power. But then, at last, he set his face toward Jerusalem. <gasps> this must be it! Maybe all of that other stuff was just to confuse his enemies. Now that he's going to Jerusalem, it's going to be exciting. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, but rather division. Here we go, they're thinking. Now the real work begins. Now the injustices of the world will be set right. Now the oppressors will get what's coming to them. Now is the time for fire. If you listen very closely, you can already hear the crackling of the flames and the crashing of swords. In fact, when Matthew tells this same story, he has Jesus come right out and say, not peace, but a sword. Luke saves the sword for later, much later, when Jesus 
is about to be arrested. He tells his friends to be ready, and they find two swords. That's enough, he says. And then a crowd comes to arrest Jesus, and one of the disciples draws his sword and immediately cuts off a man's ear. And Jesus says, no more. He heals the man's injury. He reverses the work of the sword. And then, instead of using swords to fight his enemies, instead of raining fire down from heaven or standing in judgment, Jesus dies at the hands of his enemies. And suddenly everything he has said and done comes into focus. When Jesus said that he came to bring division, he wasn't recruiting soldiers for his army. He was setting out to get crucified. All of the stuff that he did before that, preaching and teaching and healing, feeding the hungry, announcing freedom to captives, blessing sinners, and not just bringing, but being good news for the poor, that was never going to result in a violent revolution. It was never going to end in fire and destruction. It was always going to end with Jesus himself getting killed. But wait, the battle's over. In fact, it never started. But look, there is Jesus still standing. Death couldn't hold him. Violence couldn't conquer him. The one who wouldn't lift a finger to fight has raised both arms to embrace the whole world. The fires of vengeance and retribution have done their worst, but the fire of his love endures. And that fire is kindled on the earth, not in a bloody revolution or a violent revelation of power, but in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Today, these many years later, we often feel a lot like those crowds that gathered to listen to John. Fire and brimstone are always popular when things are really tough, and things are always really tough these days. It's not that we are terribly bloodthirsty, but we're tired. We're tired of war and violence, of disease and suffering and death. We're tired of watching the powerful take more while those in need get less. It's still so tempting to dream of seeing God's enemies, our enemies, punished. The idea that Jesus came not to kill his enemies, but to be killed by them is so radical that after 2,000 years, we're still trying to undo it. We want to follow, we want to follow warrior Jesus. We want to win. Most of us would rather do that from a safe distance, but some wouldn't mind getting blood on their hands. But then the real Jesus shows up. The same Jesus he's always been. Jesus shows up and he hangs out with the wrong people. He teaches the people we think he should fight and he learns from the ones we think he should teach. He announces good news to everyone who needs it. He keeps on saying and doing stuff that's liable to get him crucified 
all over. And if we're baptized with him, the same thing could happen to us. If we're baptized with him, then one way or another, we will die with him. And if we die with him, we will be raised with him. And if that happens, if we share in Jesus' resurrection as well as his death, we might just start to attract the exact sort of division that Jesus comes to bring. It isn't the division that you get when the self-righteous insist on getting their way, or when the powerful ignore the powerless, or when the hopes of the poor are trampled into dust. It's the division that comes when walls begin to fall and people are still trying to prop them up. It's the division that comes when we look around us and we see a divided world and we refuse to accept that the world must remain divided. It's the division that comes when we love real justice more than false peace. That kind of division can still be really painful, but we don't have to bear that pain alone. In fact, sometimes simply bearing the pain of division together is the first step toward healing it. And always, no matter what, Jesus is there with us. Jesus is here with us. He brings fire, not of destruction, but of fierce, relentless compassion. He brings fire of love that is stronger than death. He brings fire that will not stop until God and God's people are divided no more. So in Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen.